Chapter 4, A Whole New World. Business in the future is going to be a field day for everyone with talent because they'll no longer be forced to exist within the confines of the old guard institutions. For example, everyone who is screaming that journalism is dead because newspapers and magazines are folding is insane. The old platforms are in trouble, but that's the best thing that could ever happen for journalists. The good ones, anyway. The platforms are sinking because the readers are going online, which means that the ad money is going online. So, of course, journalists should go online, too. But their opportunity is not for work for hire, where they scramble to earn a few bucks here and a few bucks there, writing pieces for various online publications. Nor is a staff writer earning pennies while the company keeps a disproportionate amount of the ad revenue brought in on the backs of poorly paid talent. Unlike people in most fields, journalists are constantly building brand equity through their work. So all talented journalists have to do is take advantage of the technological and cultural shifts that are sinking their media platforms like leaky ships. Go into business for themselves and crush it. I make it sound easy, right? I know it's not, but guess what? It's the future and those journalists and reporters who get wise to that truth are the ones who are going to survive. Now, Some reporters and journalists are probably not business savvy enough to launch a new business on their own. Though, those who possess that rare combination of fiery entrepreneurial spirit and reporting chops could team up and form a killer online news service without any biz dev partnership at all. They're going to win really big. But journalists with less business sense but massive talent won't be left out in the cold. I guarantee that as more business developers recognize the huge potential in this market, they are going to start recruiting top talent to join them in new ventures. What might these ventures look like? We've already seen that small, lean, tight business models like Politico.com, RealClearPolitics.com, SeekingAlpha.com, and DailyBeast.com can work. The new generation of online news is going to be more democratic. Maybe we'll see a four-person journalist staff team up with a fifth business partner to create the DailyScoop.com. Everyone owns 20% of stake in the company. Obviously, you can have a 40-person team and everyone would just own fewer points. They won't report breaking news at first. And let's be honest, how much of what we read in the paper today are broken by the paper and we didn't hear about the day before on TV or radio? Rather, they'll focus on using social media to pump out provocative analysis. They do that for a year and build up cash flow through advertising, which would stream in because, as we all know, money follows the eyeballs. And these guys are good enough to draw a lot of viewers. With enough revenue in place, they would eventually be able to hire more journalists and launch investigative reporting. These reporters won't get paid 80 Gs to go to Afghanistan. They'll get paid 7% equity. You know, I love how the newspaper industry always says, who's going to do the investigative reporting? Well, investigative reporters. But they're going to get more part of the action since they're so darn valuable. And you know what's even more importantly? There will be some civilian journalism. Somebody in Afghanistan will come along armed with the combination of phone with flip cam. They're coming. You watch and stream the news live. I'm going to jump out of this for a minute because I wrote this months ago. And as we all know now, the iPhone does stream that and do that. So as you can see, technology is moving fast, even in a couple months. There are lots of other ways these new businesses could play out. What's to stop the 10 most popular journalists at the Wall Street Journal from banding together in conjunction with a business partner to create their own online all-star team? Or maybe they could launch an online newspaper in which every time an article gets a click-through, the journalist who wrote it gets two bucks. Sure, there'll be writers who might try to game the system, and there's clearly ethical questions that would come up. But anyone who goes down the path is going to get exposed, I guarantee it. Don't worry about church and state, because the lights are on the church. There have always been people in every industry with hidden agendas, but now there is no place for them to hide. News is going to get much more local, and we're going to see news paparazzi. There will be a personal brand called the News Maverick, a newer version of Geraldo Rivera, who becomes known for jumping fences with his cell phone or flip cam and breaking major stories. What will that be worth? Plenty. News has been functioning under a communistic regime, but capitalism always wins. Critics can argue with me and say that these new models demean the training and insight and education it takes to be a great journalist. And perhaps that's true. But crying about how things should be instead of embracing how things are doesn't do anyone any good. The changes affecting the news business are permanent. Fundamental supply and demand is shifting. Quantity is up, price is down. Which means the cost structure has to shrink dramatically. And like it or not, many people's respect for quality reporting has eroded. This upsets me as much as the next guy. But the fact is, 
that it's a trend that's having a huge impact on business and needs to be noticed and accepted. To explore and analyze all the sides of this story with the depth it deserves would unfortunately require way more space than this audiobook allows me. But I assure you, this is how things are going to roll. The only arguments I get in this debate, by the way, are from journalists and individuals with an emotional attachment to the idea of ink on paper and the romance of sipping a cup of coffee while reading the Sunday Times. Most business people know I'm right. If the traditional platforms are sinking ships, then journalists are sailors who need to jump. If they're not strong enough to get to the new ship, yes, they're gonna drown. But those who are great swimmers are going to sail very, very far. That is the way business has always played and always will. It's a truth that at the heart of this book, the game is changing and your opportunity is huge if you take it. The middleman has not yet been eliminated, but we're getting there. A lot has been made of how the music and news industries have been turned upside down by the internet technology. But anyone who thinks the revolution is going to stop there is naive. The massive sea change that is rocking the news industry is gonna rock every industry that relies on human interaction. And can you think of any business that isn't in some way dependent on human interaction? I can't. The changes that will be wrought by the internet are as fundamentally transformative to the content and commerce as the printing press. It's a whole new world. Build your personal brand and get ready for it. Plan your future now. If you don't plan ahead and decide where you want to go, you're in big trouble. My feeling is that no matter how much you like your job, you should aim to leave it and grow your own brand and business or partner with someone to do so. Because as long as you're working for someone else, you'll never be living entirely true to yourself and your passion. That said, I will never tell anyone to quit their job, especially if you've got other people to support. Family first, remember? I will, however, tell you to start planning to quit your job if you can't answer yes to the following checklist. One. Are you happy with your present job? Like really happy. Like you don't bitch and moan every Monday morning about how much you wish it were Friday night. Two, do you work for a company that allows you to have a public persona, either about your field or your true passion? Which when I'm through, I'll have convinced you should be one and the same, but I'll cut you some slack for now. In other words, are you allowed to have a blog, a Twitter account, or otherwise brand yourself in the public eye with an identity that is separate from that of your corporation? Some industries, like finance and law, will not allow this. If your passion is finance or law, do you love your field enough to make that sacrifice? Do you think you'll love it as much in 10 or 20 years and not regret missing out on all the opportunities inherent in social media? Three, if you're not allowed to develop a public persona at work, are you allowed to do so during your personal time? If your answers are no to number two and three, I don't care how happy you are, you should do everything you can to find another place to work or start the groundwork to launch your own business because eventually you're going to suffocate. Any company that clamps down on its best talent and doesn't allow them to talk to the public is holding that talent back from where the business world is going and you don't want to be left behind. Without the freedom to develop a personal brand, you will find yourself at a strong disadvantage to the competition that will have been pumping out the content and making a name for themselves. If you're not happy in your job, but you can still build brand equity at work or at home by blogging or creating podcasts about what you love, I still want you to plan to leave and launch your own business because life is way too short to spend it working in a job you don't love. I'm not as worried about you though as I am about someone who's happy but not allowed to talk to the public. Because as long as you're creating content and building your brand, you're building future opportunity. But if you're not happy at work and faceless and have been forbidden to talk about your passion to the world, get the hell out of there as soon as you can. You've got no chance otherwise in creating a personal brand and without one, you're professionally dead in the water. Look, financial security is important, but if you love sneakers and you know more about them and are more passionate about them than anyone else on earth, you can make money talking about them. I believe that with every ounce of my soul. Recently, Tara Swigger announced she was quitting her day job to devote herself entirely to BlondeChickenBoutique.com, where she's building a passionate community of fiber growers and artisans. She sells hand-dyed organic yarn and blogs about knitting, dyeing, and other domestic arts. She's clearly crushing it. Why can't you?